What's up my sisters and brothers in scale? For the last three and a half months we've been building this Trumpeters 148 scale MiG-27 Flogger D. It's been a very interesting journey during which I tested new tools and paint. Also my patience was tested by this model. Now it's time to weather the bird along with assembly all remaining parts. This episode will be intense so press belts and let's move on. I started with painting some scratches on the decals. There are many photos of Russian aircraft with paint flaking from their sign numbers, emblems or insignia. Or they are seriously faded. Replicating it on the model is easy and definitely looks realistic. Once I finished this step I was good to play with the oil paint. I choose faded UN white, light sand, painless grey oil, sepia, olive green and faded green. I put them on a piece of a cardboard so they could drip from oil. This what I'm going to do now is probably called the wet blending technique. Or you name it on your own. The idea is simple. Firstly, I brush a solid layer of the white spirit or, in my case, an odorless thinner for oil. Secondly, I put random dots with paints here white and light sand. Thirdly, I stippled dots mixing them together and with the thinner. Thanks to it I achieved an uneven surface with blended colors. Some of you may ask what the purpose of this technique. And of course it is a very good question. The main purpose is to break ideality of the main color and create a layer of faded worn paint. The main difference between this and, for example, filters is that filters are to tone the color up or down. They are also applied in a solid tidy layer. Here I want to make the paint worn with various shades. I do this on both horizontal and vertical surfaces. I highly recommend this technique for all of you who are not perfect with airbrush weathering technique. You can use it with success and, unlike marbling with an airbrush, you can remove the oil paint, not damaging the main layer, once you're not happy with the result. That's why it's a very safe practice. The recipe is similar with other colors, I only changed the main shade using white and light sand as the base. The exception were only the yellow camouflage parts where I used them without any extra color. For brown paint I add to white and light sand sepia, for light green olive green, for dark green faded green. On the bottom side I only mixed white along painless grey oil. Now it's time for an ancient technique invented by the Buddhist monks on Himalaya mountain, the sponge chipping. MiG-27 was mostly primed in bright grey color. So I mix on a wet palette pale grey with white, added two drops of tap water and I was good for chipping. For those of you who haven't done it yet, please mind to remove most of the paint from the sponge before touching the model, otherwise you will end with a huge unrealistic stain that would look like someone flushed the paint straight from the can. When I was happy with sponge chips, I took a fine brush and connected various small scratches into bigger ones.
The next step was to paint these deeper ones. A characteristic armor plates on the fuselage sides were chipped with natural steel while everything else was dark aluminum. I also used interior yellow because the MiG-27 was prime in several places in this color. By the way, these chips were looking so well that I decided to use them on couple more pieces of the model, even though it's not according to reference pictures. Let's talk about post shading. I do this occasionally because I don't feel quite confident with this technique. Nevertheless, I had to try Amos shaders. These ink-like liquids act like a highly diluted paint that can be washed away if you don't like the result or you don't succeed with its application, like here. Ideally, they should be sprayed on semi-gloss surface, but after several attempts I learned how to use them on the gloss one. Honestly, I haven't observed any serious color differences between Starship Field and Grime. But shaders did a really good job outlining panel lines along with creating dirt stains accumulated around dimples and edges. I even started to play with them. What's very interesting, blending shaders during drying with a brush soaked in water gives very interesting effects and definitely I will use them for my upcoming project. Red stars, side numbers and other insignias were painted with highly diluted UN white oil to replicate fading paint. Let's leave the model for a while and talk about the canopy. Montex mask set will be very useful while painting its frame because it contains masks for internal and external sides. Like many Soviet Russian aircraft, MiG-27 has a very nasty ceiling that stands out quite significantly. The idea is to use the internal sides for painting a solid ceiling line with ochre color. When the paint dried, I took the external parts and painted the frame with brown grey. I also added several aluminum scratches with the sponge, along with varnishing the whole part with semi-gloss varnish. Next, I dry brushed an oil white on leading edges of the aircraft, smearing it after with a cotton pad. Thanks to it, the model looks more three-dimensional. After this, I sprayed a thin layer of gloss varnish to protect all of my work before applying the wash that would blend the previous layer of oil. I decided to prepare two shades of washes on my own. The first one, comprised of sepia and faded navy blue, will be applied on the aircraft while the second one, bitume mixed with field grey, will go on landing gear parts. In my opinion this is much better than enamel washes that are more comfortable but using them is like one to know, you have a model or you have a dirty model, there's nothing in the middle even if you dilute them with the thinner. I'm not also a fan of washes standing out significantly, with the contrast preferring a subtle distinguishing of rivets and panel lines. Once I applied the wash I took a hair dryer for obvious purpose. No, the hair dryer is not for me chopping. I blew a cold air stream to accelerate the drying. Only do not forget to set the cold stream, otherwise you could damage the paint layer or even melt the plastic. I also apply the second wash shade on landing gear elements.
After 8 hours the wash was ready to remove its excess. Best for this purpose is dry toilet paper because this thing doesn't scratch the surface and is not as soft as kitchen towel or cotton pad to remove the wash from panel line. And this is the effect I was trying to achieve. Thanks to the thinner, the paint was coming off without any problem. You mustn't wait 8 hours for this because these are oils, you can start to remove them even after a whole day. A hair dryer accelerates the initial drying time when the model is wet and 10 minutes saves us 3 hours. Next I added some dirt on the lower and upper part of the model and diluted engine grind effect on wings. The last part of the weathering was to create rain marks on the upper side. It's one of my favorite techniques because it's easy and the subtle effect adds more, let's call it, life to the model. The very important word is subtle because we can ruin the whole work with uh, one detail, nothing the paint enough. The paint must be heavily diluted, what's extremely important with AK5 gens that are very rich in pigment. The paint must contain less than 2% of the mixture, while the thinner is at least 98%. Otherwise, we will have an extra camo layer, which is not necessary in this case. My rain marks were made of bright dunkel gelb, which imitates dry deposit, and German grey, which imitates wet marks. So let's assemble the model, which even in this very crucial moment didn't want to cooperate. Trumpeter did many things wrong with accuracy, parts fitting and the comfort of assembly. For example the landing gear struts. There are no locking tabs and you have to try their best alignment. Of course the instruction also approaches this issue vaguely. So even though I assembled struts previously, it turned out their alignment is much different once you attach them to the fuselage and slide in this part to connect them. The only alternative is to glue them while building the model, but then it will be easy to damage them during assembly, painting or weathering. Is this the end of problems? Of course that no. Landing gear doors are too thick and I had to move these parts to the edge, otherwise the fuel tank doesn't fit. I had to squeeze it praying not to damage anything. In the end I had to leave a tiny gap between the pile and the fuselage. Luckily the gap wasn't big, so I could fill it with an acrylic putty, which excess was removed with a wet cotton stick. Later I painted the place of filling with black paint to create shades and cover the putty. After adding some antennas from hypodermic needle, 
and pitot tube stolen from my MiG-21 radar antenna tip, the model was finished. However, the model was very demanding in terms of building accuracy, this whole Calvary was a very fruitful time for me. I didn't smash this thing against the wall, but I also had a chance to try some new tools and learned that limits of my patience are much further I was expecting before. So there she is, the Trumpeters MiG-27 Flogger D in 148 scale. As you might have spotted at the beginning of the video, I have started with my Patreon website and I will be honored if you decide to become one of my Patreon. I have more pictures of JU-88, Object 279 and MiG-27 models which you can may have access to in reward. My dream is to create more and more content for you and this is the best way to get closer to this idea. Please also do not hesitate to express your opinions about the model in the comment section below, like or dislike the video and subscribe to my channel along with hitting the bell icon next to the subscription button. Then YouTube will gently alert you once I upload the next video. It should happen soon anyway because I'm finishing the assembly of upcoming model. It will be... Okay, I will keep you in suspense. It is better to surprise instead of spoiling. Thank you for watching my friends. Stay safe, stay happy. See you in about one month of time. Cheers!